All right, well, uh, this time I'm gonna say good evening, class. I'm just gonna guess it's the evening. And I may be right or I may be wrong. That's okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. The only thing that matters is if you're ready to learn about how to find the domain and range of the graph. You see, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you're sitting there like, uh, Mr. Miller, my teachers, they keep asking me to find the domain and range of the graph, and I am not sure how to do that. Will you please shed some light on the situation? To which I will say, sure. I would love to shed some light on that situation to the best of my ability. I make no promises, but I will try my very best. All right, so the domain by definition is all possible values of x. And x is over here cruising along the horizontal axis. That's the one that gets labeled x. And so the domain is all possible values. So I, I drew this graph, I just made up that that was 15. I, I didn't measure it or anything, but let's just say it ends at 15. It starts over here, negative 10. So then all possible values of x are negative 10, right? It could be the graph exists over here at negative nine and exists over here at negative eight and negative seven and negative 7.2 and negative 6.8 and negative one and zero and one and two and three and four and five and six. Do you see the graph exists everywhere in between negative 10 and 15? So the domain is going to be every single number between negative 10 and 15 because beyond 15, there's no graph. Before negative 10, there's no graph. You see, so the graph is totally encapsulated between negative 10 and 15. So how do we write that symbolically, right? How do we write it symbolically? We go like this, we say, okay, x, oh, come on, you could be, uh, I got so many black markers here, I'm gonna grab the one black marker that does not uh, write. Here we go, here we go. You see, don't, don't ever say I didn't care. If I didn't care, I wouldn't have gone and grabbed a new marker for you. I would have stuck with that other one. Now, x has to be greater than negative 10, or it's gotta be less than 15. That's the domain, sports fans. That's it. It's one other little thing I need to touch on though. You see, that little circle I drew is an open circle. I intentionally did not fill that in. If I wanted to fill it in, I would have. Trust me, but I didn't want to. This one, however, I did want to. That is why it is currently filled in. So, so what, what does an open circle mean, right? Look, the open circle means that that value, negative 10, where it starts, isn't part of the graph. It means everything beyond negative 10 go in this direction, but not negative 10. Negative 10 don't count. And that's what this says. That says x has to be greater than negative 10. It can't equal negative 10 because if you equal something, you are not greater than it. Over here, I put a closed dot. You see, the closed dot means that is part of the domain. So, oh my God, that was really embarrassing. I dropped the marker. I apologize, I apologize. It is part of the domain. And so X, yeah, it can be less than 15, but it can also be equal to, so you gotta roll that way. You gotta roll that way. You gotta put the bar under there. Now, there's a lot of different conventions, so I'm gonna give you one more notation which is like this. So this is gonna say the exact same thing. You go parenthesis, negative 10, right, comma, 15, and that gives a bracket. So the bracket says it can be 15. The parenthesis says, uh-uh, no. Negative 10 is not part of the domain. It's gotta be bigger than negative 10. Gotta be bigger. You know, I think I wrote on myself earlier today. I have to bring the suit to the old dry cleaner. Uh, you know, I, I, sometimes what I tell students to do, I, I, I honestly do, and I'm not kidding. Um, I go like this, I say, why don't you just highlight everywhere along the x-axis where the graph exists? And that line will tell you what the domain is, and then your only goal is to figure out how do you express that line using symbolic language. All right, let's go to the range. 
So the range is all possible values of x. Whatever that function can be, whatever that function might be, is part of the range. Whatever it was, whatever it could be. And so the way I've drawn it here, so this highest point, I'm claiming this to be the highest point is at 8, and this lowest point here is at negative 2. So the range is everything between 8 and negative 2. Everything between 8 and negative 2. And I'm going to say that this point here is below 8. So this point over here is at, is at like 15, 7. So it's below this point. This is the highest point, all right? So how do we write that? We come over here and we say, okay, so this is our domain. So this is going to be our range. And we're going to say, y has got to be greater than negative 2. Because the graph don't exist below negative 2. There ain't a value of y that is below negative 2. Negative 2 is the smallest one. You want to try to find a value less than negative 2, you'll be staring at this graph all day long because you ain't going to find it. Because it is not there. You see, but it can equal negative 2. In fact, it does equal negative 2. It equals negative 2 right there, all right? Now, it has to be less than 8. Now, we see that open circle, so we know it can't actually be 8. So I'm going to say less than 8 right there. I'm not going to say less than or equal to 8. I'll hit you with that other notation. So uh, we could be on the same page. These are, this is our range, that is our domain, and if you want to trace that axis, which is a nice thing to do, you can see, you know, just trace along the y-axis, wherever the graph has value, trace along that axis and roll. All right, let me give you one more. Let me give you one more, you're gonna like this. By the way, this is called a continuous graph. How about that? How about that? All right, here we go. Oh, this is going to be good. But you know I'm going to pull out something here, pull out something tricky here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go, whoop. Oh, but I got that arrow now. And I'm going to go close dock there. Now, we got to just establish some points. So I'm going to say that that's not a good enough marker for us. Okay, we'll call this negative 5. And we'll say this lowest point here is at 2. And I think that's all we're going to need. So let's go. Let's talk. Let's talk domain. So domain is all the parts along the x-axis. And it starts here. So I know x can never be less than negative 5 because the graph don't have value before negative 5. So when I'm talking x, I'm going to say, yo, negative 5, you've got to be greater than. But you can't equal negative 5 because I filled in that dot. If I left that dot hollow, Hollow, hollow. Then I would have said it's greater than. And I wouldn't put this little equal sign, but I'm going to put that little equal sign now. Here's the trip. This always trips people up. Look, you see that arrow? Do you see that arrow? That arrow means this graph goes on forever. Forever? Forever, ever? Forever, ever? Outcast. Remember that? You know, you know what I'm talking about, Miss Jackson. Forever, ever? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's, I should play that, but it's not queued up. It's not queued up, so I can't. Uh, it goes on forever, ever, ever, all right? And so it's going to keep going here because it's kind of going this way, but it goes this way for all eternity. And if that's not poetic, I don't know what it is. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5, meaning it can go on forever. Hey, if we want to look at that other one, we've got to say negative 5, comma, infinity. And you can never be infinity. All right, let's look at the range. Then we're going to call this one a day. Look at the range. So I'm going to, I'm going to highlight all the values on, along the y-axis that the graph exists. i got to start at 2, and i got to go up forever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. All right? So now the range is going to be 2. It's greater than or equal to y. I, I, I wrote that wrong. I said it wrong. I wrote it right. It's 2 is less than or equal to y, but it it's, makes more sense to write y is greater than 2. Okay, so I'll write it like that. And over here, I probably should put the x on that side and write it like this, but uh, whatevs. All right, so now y actually can be 2, right? That is a value there, and uh, it goes on to infinity, which it can never be infinity. All right, let's, uh, let's get a little conclusion here.
the world turns Oh, what the heck? Or, we good? There it is. Conclusion music. Uh, you can do this. That's one. Um, two. When this graph is a continuous line like that, it's always an inequality. And the reason it's an inequality, this will be the last thing I say, is you have to remember this. You have to remember that in between the numbers one and two is an infinity. And so you can't list them all. It's impossible. One, 1.1, 1 1.123, 1 1.1234567. 1 I'll be here all day. And so if you see any part of this graph that's continuous, you need to be thinking inequalities or switching to that notation. Tonight's back to school now night. I so uh, I better clean up. When she calls, um, don't send 